yesterday was pretty much a washout when it comes to rain. And it came down really, really heavy. I was sitting there in the morning, and I was like, well, maybe it won't rain much. And it just downpoured. Come out of nowhere. Like, the floodgates are open. The skies are open. So I didn't get really much work at all. Um, it is Friday, and I'm happy. I'm thanking God no matter what. He is gracing us all and keeping us all and keeping us steadfast in the Lord. Um, I'm going to read a chapter out of this book, All in All, by A. E. Nock. Uh, I had it out for a little bit and was wondering what I was going to share out of it. You know, I could go from cover to cover and it would be beautiful, but there's some chapters in here that uh, excel other chapters in the sense of revelation and realization of the height of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, he is Christ Jesus exalted. And that's the name of this chapter, the Savior's Exaltation. You know, God highly exalts him with the name that is above every name in the whole of the universe. And here it is. The humiliation and kenosis or emptying of Christ becomes the basis of his highest honors. This is outlined for us in the clearest of expressions in Philippians 2, 5 through 11. <clears throat> for let this disposition be in you, which is in Christ Jesus also. And we spoke a lot about disposition lately. Who being inherently in the form of God, deems it not pillaging to be equal with God, nevertheless empties himself, taking the form of a slave, coming to be in the likeness of humanity, and being found in fashion as a human, he humbles himself, becoming obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore also God highly exalts him and graces him with the name that is above every name. So we are boasting in the name of Jesus Christ now as believers walking here in this humiliation because we are kept low in our mortal state and in our humiliation on purpose to experience as Jesus Christ himself experienced it while he walked this earth. So why would not his members, the body, be experiencing the same thing and the same kind of humiliation which we are experiencing all of us uh, collectively and individually I believe um, that in the name of Jesus every knee should be bowing celestial and terrestrial and subterranean and every tongue should be acclaiming that Jesus Christ is Lord for the glory of God the Father he went from the place supreme to the deepest depth, and God has made him Lord of all. Leaving the form of God, he took that of a slave, becoming like a man. He humbled himself, becoming obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Apart from being God himself, nothing can be higher than having the form of God. God himself is invisible. 1 Timothy 1.17 and Hebrews 11.27 to bring him within the range of human comprehension, he must be depicted by an image, having a form. We will also have forms in our new celestial bodies. And we will have a body and a definite form, and I would believe uh, reflecting the image of our Lord Jesus Christ as members of his body, yes. We would have to reflect that image. And this is why I think that our powerful new celestial frames will look as we look. Spit an image of Christ our Lord, our brother. And in the sense of the color, the light, the energy, the power, and the brightness will be super exceedingly higher than anything you could even imagine when it comes to light. Um, this light here on the earth is so dim and so fading 
the in our new celestial frames it will be so brilliant and powerful no words can describe that um, speaking with uh, a few of my brethren a bit ago and uh, we talked about it the color spectrum and all the colors that are in the earthly spectrum of color is actually uh, pales in comparison to the colors of the celestial and this is why I believe when we're there it'll be so extreme that we will need we will actually reflect it we will actually be that color spectrum among the celestials that powerful <clears throat> it's hard to go with words human words when they when describing it uh, Paul said transcendently transcendent well these words are the only expression that we can come up with or a human being can come up with and our Apostle Paul had it <clears throat> he said it transcendently transcendent Eonian burden of glory and it will be glorious okay the living God cannot be made known by lifeless representations hence he has chosen one his creative original in whom all was created to represent him to be the invisible to be the visible image of the invisible deity his shape or form must be that which is suggestive of God especially of the character which he assumes on any occasion in order to reveal himself to his creatures Christ Jesus was that form in him God was seen in such a theophany as suited the weakness of the human frame yet in visions he appeared in soul dismaying splendor as when Isaiah beheld his glory Wow that is the pre-existence of Christ right there uh, this passage as all else in this epistle deals with service not essential being as the subject of this passage Philippians 2 5 through 8 is the height from which Christ descended it does not treat of his relationship to God in other respects the equality here spoken of does not arise from intrinsic identity, identity but extrin, extrinsic form okay not intrinsic but extrinsic extrinsic I can't even pronounce it but anyway outwardly <clears throat> to human gaze he was God Elohim the Jehovah this it was which he did not deem pillaging the fact that he could take the place of God without taking anything from him is here understood or introduced to show his supreme position in the universe he was the effulgence of God's glory the most magnificent and sublime sublime percept to be found as there was no higher height he could not be exalted without a previous descent okay so now tomorrow we will talk about the descent of Christ meaning coming down taking the form of a slave coming in the likeness of humanity to die on that stake that Roman stake and take away the sin of the world he died for all humanity and all creation it'll it'll be shown in the oncoming eons through the ecclesia which is the body of Christ what Christ actually did at that cross he himself as our brother as our head did for all humanity he did this for us as members of his body so we could be a display of God's grace and transcendent grace in the oncoming eons so have a beautiful Friday grace and peace